Hello, uh, my name is Silas Klug. Um, I recently have purchased a paste extruder. I am very excited about this. Uh, I always wanted it. It was always way too expensive for me though. And so, uh, I wish I would have started this yesterday because I just want to document it uh, to ease other people's concerns as well as uh, to show off and uh, showcase any possible improvements that we might do. Because I'm probably not planning on installing it the uh, most traditional way of taking off my whole extruder and such, I'm, uh, I'll show you and get into that soon. So, uh, this is what I did in like an hour and a half yesterday. I just did the very basics. I printed the parts, I printed them with a .4 nozzle and p wood PLA. Uh, I just, any PLA would have done, I just had wood in my machine and it was cheap, so, and I like working with it, so I did. Uh, but I did it with a .4 nozzle, I printed it, uh, all of them have a 1.2 millimeter, so I made three passes around the outside with 25% infill, so they're pretty dense, strong parts. Uh, these screws and everything went in very easily. So far, I still have a lot of hardware I didn't use. You can see I didn't attach everything's not mounted all the way in because I imagine I'm going to be taking everything apart and in apart and in and apart every couple. Uh, I'm going to do that a whole lot before we actually have this thing working. But I did actually just run it yesterday. I just uh, unplugged the extruder's motor, uh, put in instead uh, this stepper, and it does work just to make sure I wasn't wasting time uh, working on something that doesn't. So um, You can notice I did print this a little too cold. It wasn't quite strong enough, so it already has a little crack right there. But that's not too big of a deal. I mean, it's still where it should be, and I'll replace it as time goes on. I'll print a new one over the next uh, couple of days. Um, I'll be doing that because... Here, I'm just going to set this down. I wish I had a real camera, a studio or something, but I'm in a little apartment, and I can't afford to buy anything else. So, um, I have a 3D head printed plunger head in there. Here, I can rip it out. The only issue is this plunger head, the stock one, I don't... I hope somebody gets it to work, and maybe if they do, uh, feel free to give me information of how it works. I already printed a new one myself that I designed. I can show you what it, mine looks like. Um, it's just a little smaller, so this rubber, rubber seal, the head goes on easier. And so I printed my own. The only issue I'm having is uh, getting this part to stick onto here. I believe they want you to use a set screw, uh, but there was a few issues with that. First off, the hole was uh, just didn't work for me. I don't remember if it was too big or too small, but um, there's going to be some revision on that. Uh, I know this might not be applicable to everyone, sadly, but I have a lathe um, up there. So I'm going to take my lathe down, and I have some aluminum stock that I'm probably just going to turn these out of aluminum, and that'll be real easy for me. Uh, I could then always easily make a little batch of them and sell them to anybody else interested, or possibly Printobot or do the same, or hopefully somebody just comes up with a good 3D printed uh, alternative. I've never had good success with 3D printed uh, plunger heads, uh, but hopefully somebody uh, better than I can do that. So I'll probably, for the next video, have this all taken apart as I replace more things, because again, I don't, there's no instructions on this yet, so I just kind of put it together. It's pretty self-explanatory, just these uh, three blocks in the back, mounted the motor onto it, and the rest of the panels. Um, some of the questions I have, there's a lot of hardware left over. I like to think that's just because they want to give you a lot of extra hardware, but <laughs> I'm just missing a whole lot in my mind that I don't get. So, oh well. Anyway, moving on, because I don't want this video to be super long. Traditionally, I would remove my motor and extruder, um, and instead I would just put the paste extruder right there instead. Block it out. That's The only thing is, I don't like the idea of having to recalibrate everything every single time. Um, <laughs> when I did the design work to put the injection motor extruder on this, I had to do a whole bunch of taking things on, reprinting, taking everything apart, reprinting, and I don't want to ever have to do that again. I mean, it's not bad, but just doing it wastes a whole lot of time that you want to be working on your project. So, 
my plan is we're going to make an aluminum piece, probably not too much thicker than an eighth inch. It's going to, here, let me whip that off. There's always those three holes. <laughs> I only have two of them in anyway. But there's those three holes that go into the extruder. I'm going to have to switch back to the aluminum, so uh, most people probably have the aluminum block in here. So that'll it'll remind more people of their machines as I go on. But I'm going to mount an aluminum, like, eighth-inch thick plate from these three on our dr cut out or draw out that hole and I'll extend it out here so there'll be a nice little flat platform uh, right here for that to mount on and it'll be under because I don't think you can go over because that pushes up your motor and it did a few other things that um, became a pain in the butt for me and I'm guessing most people don't want that and I'm also ready to go back to just the standard extruder so we're just gonna take those three holes down here, one, two, three. We're gonna push it out. We're gonna put one, two, three holes and be able to mount this, mount the extruder right in front of it. So that way, since this extruder is lower, this will be what's touching the bed and we'll be able to leave those intact and we wouldn't have to adjust them every time. The only thing we're probably thinking is if we do this, well, look at that. We'd only have like two or three inches of this bed. But what I'm realizing is there are four nice little holes on this bed. And we can just extend that out. So if we take, say, I don't know, what is this, nine inches? If we take a nine inch by 12 inch board, we set that on here. We drill out these four holes and just put some little pins in there. It'll keep it in place. Uh, since with paste printing, we're going to be doing tall layers, it's not as important that it's perfectly like this milled flat aluminum. So I'll probably just get like some MDF, uh, something nice and soft, because most of my paste extruding is probably not going to be extruding onto a bed. It'll be onto either cookies or a cake or something. So that's my plan. We're going to extend this bed. We're going to make an aluminum plate that comes out here. We're probably going to mill an aluminum piece until uh, Brooke or somebody awesome community member comes up with a great 3D printed solution because the current 3D one's really hard to get in that syringe and out. So a lot of things to work on. Um, I'm super excited. I have about a month where I'm between jobs and I'm going to be working on this a lot of my free time and I'm super excited. We're going to find out what this big bolt is also. I have no idea what this big bolt is for. It's bigger thread than this. It's even bigger. There's even this thing took forever to figure out where that goes, but this big bolt and this the big nut that goes with it. I'm I don't, I don't know. And also I'm not using end stops. That seems ridiculous. I don't I want to do a, as minimal wiring and as minimal uh I don't want to change my firmware. So, um I'll elaborate on all this in the future. Um I hope everybody appreciates this and hopefully uh the paste extruder won't seem so scary but really just a easy add-on like I think it really should be. Um it's going to be awesome. Uh thank you guys so much for watching. Uh Anybody that's excited, feel free to give me suggestions or comments, and we'll see what we can improve on. Thank you.